the ground and disregard it. Strip you off the ground, show you what heart is. Standing strong and proud of me, not this. Let's get it started. It's the hardest. Talk around and disregard it. Strip you off the ground, show you what heart is. Standing strong and proud of me, not this. Let's get it started. Yeah, yeah. yeah, get your boots ready. We're about to go on a trip where we wrestle, nobody settling, no calling it quits. You're here for the grit, betcha this stuff is amazing. You're stumbling, welcome to the bump in the apron. Step into it, the hardest part of the ring. Here to bring fun, yeah, in this art, he is king. It's the best thing, making sure you don't tap out. Don't go soft with the hardest part cast out. And it's not just another one, it's clear. Off the rest, in this content, none can test. Take the nonsense off the steps. You know it's nothing but Pure gems when it's coming off the chest. Get it? Now it's time to sit and relax. Get your mind blown away. Ain't no skipping a track. Have you paying more attention? No listening gap. Get everything I ever wanted. No giving it back. Yeah. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Kyle. You see, this is why I call myself the hardest part of the ring. Because Kyle is just such, I don't know, man. It's just such a dildo name. I hate it, man. It's so soft. Kyle. Fuck off, Kyle. Dickhead. I've met very few Kyles that I've liked, I'm gonna be honest, but. <laughs> so the hardest part of the ring is better, is what I'm saying. I feel like I need to throw that out there because. I, think, I feel like people get confused, like, is your podcast called The Hardest Part of the Ring? Are you Hardest Part of the Ring? Who are you? What's an apron bump? Are you gay? What? So, <laughs> yeah, if you want to know how to brand your podcast, uh, talk to somebody else. Don't talk to me, because uh, I'm very bad at it. But uh tell you what is also very bad, Return of the Fun... <laughs> no. This is actually a very fun show. ECW... Return of the Funker, 1995. Such a, such, such a fun time watching this show, man. I mean, what, what a time. What a time in wrestling. You have WWF having Doink the Clown and building up to Bam Bam Bigelow versus LaDamian, not LaDamian, Tomlinson. Lawrence Taylor. I, got the, I had the wrong LT there for a second. You have Vader and Hulk Hogan fucking around with straps over there in WCW. But then you got ECW, you got, you know, barbed wire baseball bats, you got blood, you got Hector Guerrero, you got all that shit, right? But that's just what I, that's what I love about doing this podcast and what I hope you, the viewer, enjoy is the, uh, the constant change in atmosphere of these shows that I cover. It makes it feel fresh every week, at least for me it does. Like, for example, last week... We covered TNA Slammiversary 2005, where uh, the show ended with Raven winning the NWA world title. So you had this whole story of Raven, you know, this whole culmination of his 10 year journey, finally winning the big one. But now we're here at the beginning of that 10 year journey, just the start of Raven, literally just right, just heels off of his debut in ECW. And let me tell you, man, it's it's interesting as hell to see how the crowd was just not into guys like Raven or guys like Tommy Dreamer at this time. But and it's equally as interesting to see what they are interested in. Uh, I brought up the barbed wire baseball bat match earlier, and I, that wasn't just a joke. It sounds like a joke, but it's a thing that happened on this show between Ian and Axel Rotten. You know, the crowd is into that kind of stuff. They're also very much into Terry Funk. Man, the biggest pop of the night was Terry Funk coming out, even in the goofy-ass way that he did uh, towards the end. They're into Terry Funk. They're into Hack Myers. But boy, howdy, they are not into Hector Guerrero versus Too Cold Scorpio. <laughs> but we get, we get into all of that and more on this episode. And joining me on this episode is Matt from the Shining Wizards Wrestling Podcast. And let me tell you, man, Matt was the perfect guest for this show. Uh, just the perfect kind of Jersey trash that this episode <laughs> needed for to, to encapsulate ECW and what it was like back then. Just such a fun time, man. 
Uh, you can catch him and his co-host, like I said, the Shining Wizards Wrestling Podcast. They do a live show every Monday at 645 Eastern on RantEMRadio.com. You can also watch them on Facebook and listen to them wherever you listen to podcasts. All their info in the description below. Go check them out. Fun-ass group of guys over there and a fun-ass apron bump today. So let's get into it. ECW Return of the Funker 1995 with myself and Matt from the Shining Wizards Wrestling Podcast. So I guess right out the gate, I got to ask, uh, were you uh, were you an ECW watcher back in the day? I was. I was a very big uh, ECW watcher. Yeah. Were you watching like at this time in 95? Uh, it was later in 95 when I discovered uh, ECW late night hanging out. Uh, with right. the guys watching, you know, we were all uh, crashing at somebody's house and, and wrestling came on and it was uh, it was the ECW TV. It was Shane Douglas, Pipple number two, Jericho and Scorpio four way for the TV title. Man, and I that, was, that's 95. Yes. Yeah. And I was hooked, hooked, instantly hooked. Right. I feel like that's how everybody stumbled upon ECW it was just late at night. I guess that's when it came on, right? Uh, in Jersey, it was 2 a.m. That sounds about right. Um, yeah, I never, I never watched it myself. I mean, I started watching WWF in like 98, 99, and I, I had heard of ECW, but I had, I had no idea like what channel it was on. I guess, I mean, I was six, seven years old, so I probably wasn't allowed to stay up that late anyways, but, um, but yeah, man, so, so this is all new to me. Have you seen this show specifically before? I've seen all this stuff. I am like, have you? Oh, I was, you know, 95, 96, 97 WWF was dog shit. It was... You know, yeah. wrestling plumbers and people, Mantar and Freddie Joe Floyd. <laughs> and and uh, I saw, I mean, I got some wild ECW stories. Uh, the first ECW show I was at was uh, Sabu, Terry Funk, Born to be Wired. No rope barbed wire. Mm. I was in the fourth Damn. row. Uh, I was in the crowd that caught Spike Dudley uh, when Bam oh, Bam yeah. threw him out the first, the first time. Yeah. Um, I was such an ECW fan when I was like 16 years old. I worked at a hardware store and I would bring home the mm-hmm. retractable razors and I would try to give myself Sabu scars <laughs> uh, all over myself. So you're the right you're the right person for this episode. I mean, I'm a me. <laughs> very deranged, fucked up individual, so I guess so. If you're looking for somebody who embodies the ECW spirit, then yes, that is that would be me. <laughs> Well, please, if you if you feel the need to blade during this episode, don't let me stop you. You it, know what? Those first. days are long behind me. The blading <laughs> will not happen. That's that's good to hear. Um, but yeah, you brought up how WWF is dog shit at this time, and I agree because I'm I, I kind of I'm going in chronological order between ECW, WWF, and WCW, reviewing all those shows, and I would definitely agree because if we're you know chronologically at this point, they're building up to that dog shit. WrestleMania, where it was uh, LT versus Bam Bam, Sean Diesel, and then everything else kind of just was whatever. Um, and then even WCW was like Hogan was there, but he th- the honeymoon period was kind of already over with him, and he was kind of just in like a dead end feud with Vader, and then they just had a there was nothing else really going on with WCW. And I feel like at this point, I don't know if you would agree or not, but I feel like as far as like progress for a company, ECW was was doing the best out of the three. At this point, they definitely weren't hitting the numbers. I'm not going to suggest like they're you know, making the profits that these other companies were. But like, I feel like that was the most fun company out of the three. Yeah, I'd agree. I mean, it was an alternative to the WWF and WCW. And I was like 15, 16 when I found ECW. Uh, and it's hard enough when you're 15, 16 years old trying to figure out who you are, uh, mm-hmm. let alone when people find out you're a wrestling fan. And the first thing they always say to you is, you know, that's fake, right? Of course, I know it's fucking fake. Right. But uh, I don't, you know, criticize the shitty TV you watch, Beverly Hills 90210, whatever <laughs> garbage is on. Uh, but then, like, yeah. you know, even 15, 16 years old, you're seeing these guys go through tables. They're fucking not putting their hands up to protect themselves from chair shots. You're like, holy shit, this might be, this might be real. Yeah. I mean, we got, we got an Ian and Axel Rotten match on this show that is uh, not fake. No, and there's a, it's like a, there's a trilogy of them. They're all over the place. I know you did double tables uh, a little while ago when mm-hmm. they had a match there. They had some gems, yep. those two. And, and to be fair, I just want to put it out. I know I said 
WWF was dog shit in 95, but it definitely still has it. I, I'll go back and watch WWF from 1995 anytime. Right. Yeah. Just for like the, just how fun, like the characters that were there. It's like so bad. It's good. Kind of like in hindsight now. Yes. Um, but yeah, ECW here, they're, they're still very fresh off of that. Uh, their, their rebrand from Eastern championship wrestling to extreme. They're just like a few months after. Um, but they're really starting to lean into that extreme element with this show. Um, but hopping into the show gets right off to it with a tag team match. We have Chad Austin and Joel Hartgood versus the Pitbulls. What's your favorite Joel Hartgood match? Uh, this one is my favorite <laughs> Joel Hartgood match. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Were you rooting for him in this one? Rooting hard. You'd be disappointed. You'd be disappointed if you were. Yeah. I, you know what? I was like, you know what? These two uh, pasty white dudes look like they can handle the Pitbulls. Yeah. <laughs> You know what's funny though? The Pitbulls, is it just me? Or are they like fucking tiny? Like just from a height perspective. From a height perspective, yeah, but they're built like Porta Johns. They're fucking right. you know, <laughs> squatty, but they're really, really yeah. giant. Yeah, they're they're big meaty lads. They're mean, mean looking fellers. Yeah, they sure are. But uh yeah, this is essentially a squash uh to start off the show. The Pitbulls, uh correct me if I'm wrong, they become one of the biggest tag teams in ECW. At, a, at some point, right? They do. They become it's. We talk about it on the Shining Wizards podcast. It's one of the best stories that Paul E. tells uh, at the beginning of ECW with the Pitbulls and Raven and Stevie Richards and Nine One One and Tommy Dreamer. It's a beautifully done story arc where uh, all this, all these separate stories come together, and the Pitbulls are, are kind of at the center of it with the voluptuous Francine. Ah, uh, yes, of course. Uh, but uh, Chad Austin and Joel Hartgood were not voluptuous here. They just get shit on in this match. Really quick match. Uh, the Pitbulls end up winning with the Super Bomb, which is basically that Dudley, Dudley Boy style power bomb off the second rope. Um, yeah, not a lot to this match. I guess it's just the beginning of that arc you just described for the Pitbulls here. Yeah, they're just they're just building them up. And the Joel Joel Hartgood was a shot at Joel Goodhart, who was the promoter. He was one of the promoters with Dennis Carluzzo, who had Eastern Championship Wrestling before. Oh yeah, they pulled the old. So I think he was a jobber in like USWA and Smoky Mountain Wrestling in the early nineties. Right. A fun little Easter egg there. Oh, I'm a fucking wrestling dork, so I know. Like, <laughs> That's why I brought you on. I got pages of notes, dude. <laughs> Man, you uh, you printed them out. I'm oh, impressed. Oh yeah, I'm a I'm a you know if I'm gonna represent the Shining Wizards. Uh, you know, I'm going to try and get people to listen. And then when they tune in Monday and see what a shit show it is, then I can. Hell yeah. You know, at least I got you, you to lure listen them in. one episode. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, after that, Raven comes out. And uh, first of all, I just I just adore the copyrighted music all over this show. Uh, Raven coming out to the offspring. And uh, as you kind of described, this is kind of the beginnings of the beef between him and Tommy Dreamer. Because Raven is very new. He just came in at Double Tables. And uh, so I guess the backstory basically is that they went to high school with each other. Raven and Tommy Dreamer. And Tommy was kind of the pretty boy. And Raven was the outcast. Um, but it's it's weird that it almost it's like, I guess, Tommy's position as the baby face here. But you would think it'd be the other way around. I don't know if you agree with that or not. Yeah, it took a, uh, it took a while for people because Tommy came in. He was from like Dreamland. He wore like the, the singlet, the pink singlet. Uh, yeah. And, and you know they just instantly shit all over him. Um, but yeah, I mean ECW was ahead of its time with something like this where, uh, you know, Dreamer comes in, he's the jock, and he picked on uh the, the burnout that is Raven. Mm -hmm. Uh, but this is some of this is like the beginning of, of Ra you know, Raven's best work. His yeah. stuff in ECW 100%. is unbelievable. Uh, and I don't know yeah. how far down the rabbit hole you've gone yet, but you're in for quite a, a treat. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. I've only known Raven from uh, WWF and TNA. So um, definitely looking forward to it. But, um, you know, like you said, the crowd was just shitting all over this. They, they weren't into what was going on at this point because Raven was still very new. They had only known him as Scotty Flamingo from the WWF. 
Tommy Dreamer, like you said, he's the pretty boy jock. So it's like, why are we going to get behind him? Um, but they're planting seeds for something that's going to be great in time. But yeah, the segment here it doesn't help that they good. bring out the Broad Street Bullies either. That nobody gives a shit about. <laughs> you, you didn't like uh, Ever Rise from the future. D- these guys <laughs> wish they were fucking Ever Rise from the future. Johnny Hotbody and Tony Stetson to- could be the two biggest sacks of shit. Look, there's a ECW for all that it is and what it becomes. There's a lot of good, but there's a ton of fucking dog shit uh, uh-huh. in ECW, uh, and the Broad Street Bullies are one of them. Uh, At least you have Stevie Richards out here cutting a great promo. Yes, Stevie Richards, fantastic promo. Wait till we get. Wait till Francine comes into the picture. Man, you have so oh, much to. You're gonna. Your mind's gonna explode when you see all this shit. I bet. I hope it does because, uh, yeah, Stevie Richards out here. He's uh, the crowd's getting to him clearly. Like he's kind of he seems nervous here. Um, he's rambling about something about how he, he was at the mall and he got beat up. And he's like, "Oh, these guys that beat me up, they're, they're the ones that could take out you know Tommy Dreamer and end his career, or whatever." And they end up being the Broad Street Bullies, as you mentioned, a couple of jamokes, non-threatening, <laughs> but. Tommy Dreamer ends up coming out with like a, I think he comes out with a stop sign, correct? Yes. Or he gets one eventually, yeah. Just wipes out everybody. Him and Raven fight to the back. And uh, yeah, like I said, eventually this becomes a, a marquee feud for the company. But right now the crowd is just not into it. Yeah, no, they're not. This is, I don't know. It's just, this is like the the weird time for ECW. I don't think anyone uh, expected it to turn into what it was going to turn into. Yeah, um, still revving up for sure. But don't worry, we got some good stuff here. We got Hack Myers. <laughs> Man, I'm I'm becoming a Hack a Hack Myers mark very quickly. Look, the shot <laughs> is fantastic. Bad news for you, he's dead. Yeah, I mean, who isn't dead on this card, really? I mean, uh, is, is, is 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 uh, is Paul Loria still around? I, you know what? That's a great question. Uh, one of the first ECW I tapes tapes I ever bought from RF Video was mm-hmm. focused around the giant Paul Loria and Mike Lipwright, <laughs> so I'm very familiar with the storyline. Let's see. Man. One of the Pitbulls is dead. Hack is dead. Yeah, let's go through it. Is DC uh, Drake dead? Uh, Actually, no. There's not. I'm going through the card here. It's A- not. Axel is dead. Marty Jannetty might as well be dead. He should be. I mean, yeah. when you're telling people you want to fuck your kid on <laughs> social media, it's a bad. <laughs> Uh, Chris do Benoit, it. he's dead. You know, Oof, we don't hear yeah. enough about that. Just, just a little bit, yeah. Nine one one is not not with us anymore. Man, uh, woman, what a retrospective. Woman, Chris Benoit, there you go. There's that tie together there. Uh, no pun intended. Um, oh no. <laughs> so this is not one of the worst ECW uh, cards. That's with, true. With uh, deceased people, and look, I've seen some WWF cards with more dead people. I think. Yeah, well, I mean, once you get further into your rabbit hole, you sure do. Yeah, that's what happens. How do you feel well, about Jason? A... Does J does Jason make you itchy all over? I'm wondering how he gets that much body oil on his body and just doesn't slip all over the place. You know, I think it is. I think it's Paul Loria. He's the giant, but I think he has tiny hands. So when he applies the baby oil, mm, it's big okay. globs, and then. So that's why they're a tag team. So mean, that's the, that's the backstory. Here. I can't see any reason why to ha- I, anyone would hang out with Paul Loria other than to have his tiny baby hands. Baby Does he have oil. small hands? I'm, yeah, I can't. I can't say that I. <laughs> I noticed. Look, I if you've got to call yourself the giant and you're a tiny man, you're probably got tiny hands, among other things. I mean, he might just have huge balls or something. Yeah, know? but what good is that? Like my work with a a girl at my job, and the other day she said. What do you need your balls for? And I was like, that's a fucking great question. <laughs> I mean, you know, reproduction, um, putting peanut butter on and having your dogs lick it off. Just there's several things. Yeah, but it depends on what state you're in because that's illegal. Oh, is it illegal in Virginia? If you, I don't know. Are you from Virginia? I am. Okay. I mean, See, I don't the answer know, to this question is. I don't know. If, <laughs> New Jersey might be a lot different. That's what they let shit fly up here. Yeah, I don't think there's rules there, really. There's some even, rules, no, but they're do you like know how to real... pump your gas. No. Yeah. <laughs> oh, do I? I know how to pump gas, yeah. but we're not allowed. Oh, to pump okay. Gas. Right. Although right, right. I work on a food truck, and it has a wonky 
uh, gas tank. So every time I have to put gas in it, I just end up pumping my own gas anyway. Oh. Like oh, they okay. do the thing and then they put it in and then I'm like, I'll just hold it and do it. I know you're busy. Oh, okay. So you're really good at holding uh, the gas. Nozzle. I can hold lots of things. Dicks, balls, whatever. Oh, okay. Well, speaking about dick and balls, we got a tag team. <laughs> um, so I don't even know if I noted who's in this match. So we got Hack Myers and Mikey Whipwreck versus Jason and the giant Paul Loria. And for anybody who listened to my Double Tables review, this is not Jason the Terrible, who was, you know, the, like the movie Jason. This is the sexiest man on earth, Jason. Um, and this is a very clunky ass match, man. I don't even know, like, that there's one spot where Mikey and Hack go for dual sunset flips on their opponents and they pull their tights down. Showing their assholes to the crowd. And uh, Jason doesn't, doesn't seem to be wanting to pull his tights up. I think that maybe it's his gimmick. Just trying to get his ass over. Yeah, I mean, look, you're going to play the sexiest man alive. So instantly, those the, the wonderful residents of that dog shit, filthy area known as Philadelphia, they won't just say, oh, look at that feminine man. I'm sure they will drop a lot of derogatory comments that may have been acceptable in 1995 mm. that are no longer acceptable now. Uh, so I'm sure he was just being showered with F-bombs while his bronzed asshole is just hanging out for hat guy to see in the front his row. asshole was bronzed i guess you got to get in there right you know what you i've it. never done the tanning but i'm gonna assume right right you just go you gotta go I mean, all out yeah i guess our assholes just not tan i don't know i don't know <sighs> i can't my memory sketchy is the last time i looked deep into an asshole um mm. But maybe that's why I can't remember. I look too deep. It's kind of like the spiral. Yeah, you got thing. that lost. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, sometimes things But I'm assuming me. you look ridiculous. If you, like, I wear a t shirt to work and I'm very tan. So when I take my shirt off, my wife just cackles at me because it looks like I'm wearing right. like a bodysuit. So if you just wear like a thong to tan and then you're naked yeah. in front of your boyfriend and or girlfriend, and they're going to cackle at your, your white right. asshole. Yeah. Your whole like weird tan lines your pasty cock there's gonna there's gonna think you look like a silly goose exactly they're gonna be like look at that silly goose with your very <laughs> pale penis get out of here man that's the title of this episode pale penis oh yeah return um, of the funker the pale penis look at least he did <laughs> at least terry funk didn't bleed out of his fucking ears on this show this fucking old piece of shit not this show not this show I had a lot of problems with Terry Funk. We got heat. Me and Terry Funk. <laughs> oh, we'll get we'll get right into it at the end here. Don't, don't you worry, buddy. I actually didn't think this match was all that bad. Yes, it was clunky. There were some spots I could have done without the buttholes. Yeah, there's a little too much buttholes in this this match for my taste. But uh, I'm kind of I'm kind of with you on that Hack Myers. Hey, he rules, right? Yeah, I man. think uh, I think by the time I was like fully in the ECW, he was out. So I don't appreciate hack myers as much as i should yeah he was he was super over in this Fucking match a, he, he had a, a great hot tag everybody's shah shah every time he punches and the crowd loves it and they hate jason so it's just a perfect blend um yeah otherwise uh, as far as spots in this match goes there's one spot where jason goes for a uh, a blackout like like lance archer does onto mikey whipwreck but he like Damn near paralyzes the man. Just drops him right on his head. I guess that's that baby oil. You know, it makes you look delicious, but it, it, it'll hurt you in some spots, I guess. Well, um, Mikey, the, Mikey, at this point, he's like your little brother. You're just going to try shit on him. Right, right. And if he ends up, you know. Yeah, if you pay a feet, look, if he can't walk, so be it. It was extreme. Right, yeah. It'll get people to buy the VHS. So it's give and take. Like I said, really. I'm in. And I know you mentioned the pirated music before. There's no mm -hmm. once the link you sent me is fantastic. There's no, you can't. Oh, yes. I have like friends that have never seen ECW and they watch yeah. it on like Peacock. And I'm like, mm. this is not just alone. Whatever that fucking generic song is, they play every time New Jack wrestles. Right. I'm like, this is not. <laughs> this is not good. We did like a Patreon watch along a couple weeks ago for NWO sold out. And when Jericho won, they played fucking break the walls down. And I'm like, this That's is terrible the link i sent you there's also a uh, wcw 
series. Like so if you ever want to watch old WCW, they got it there for you too. And I assume it would be the same kind of deal with the music. I would hope so. I found out, oh, I, my friend found a VCR for me. So I have to go to my parents' house wow. and get my wrestling video collection now. Sit, <laughs> That's impressive. Sit, sitting in a basement for fucking 20 years and just hope half of, <laughs> if half of them work, I'll be over the moon. Right. Yeah, man. But, uh, so the finish of this match comes when uh, so Hack and Mikey they're just they're just kicking ass. Uh, they do like a stereo top rope bulldog deal, but Hack Myers just has a really shitty like. It's almost like a pedigree, but his opponent's on the ground and he's on the top rope, and it looks so stupid. Um, but they're they're in there. They're, it's hot. The crowd's loving it, and then a mysterious masked man comes in which they, they panned to him earlier in the match. They didn't really mention who he was. He was just kind of standing there all creepy. Gets in there, punches Hack Myers once in the face, throws Paul Loria on top of him, and Jason and the Giant get the win here. Who doggy? Don't know how that will materialize, but uh, yeah. Yeah, any other thoughts on this match? No, I've, I was very curious as to who the mass man was. Um, and I don't think... I don't think it ever comes out. I'm not. I'm not surprised. There's a lot of uh, start and stop in ECW. <laughs> or sometimes I, they don't. They don't I, start. I, maybe someone is listening to this and they're yelling at their device that they listen to, saying it was so and so. But I'll have to do my research yeah. and figure out who that man was. It was DDP. God damn it! You're not. You don't know anything about wrestling. Oof, but sounds about right. So that's why I have a wrestling podcast. <laughs> I t- I'll tell you who it was not. It was not Hector Guerrero because he's in this next match. Hector Guerrero versus Two Cold Scorpio. And uh, so, what did what did you think about this match? I'm curious because I, I wasn't really. I didn't know how I felt about it. it well, I thought it was okay. Uh, I yeah. think it served its purpose. Um, I don't, we haven't been introduced to Eddie yet. No. So Hector is, he's, you know, Hector's big claim to fame at this point. Mm-hmm. He was the, yeah. he was the gobbly gooker. Right. <laughs> that's his, what? that's, that's it. He's Gory's kid and he was the gobbly gooker. Um, it wasn't bad. I just felt like they didn't, there, there was like a clash it, it of styles. It, it did. It was like, cause it's here on the card to be the scientific quote unquote match of the card because that's what ECW became known for is they had the violence sure but they also had some of the best technical wrestling um, especially in the later 90s um, but I'm watching this match and I'm like man, I, I see Hector Guerrero and no disrespect to Hector Guerrero but I'm watching him and I'm like wow this is Eddie Guerrero but not as good which is pretty much, I mean, he did like, he, he walked like Eddie, he looked like Eddie, he did a lot of Eddie's moves, he just didn't, he wasn't as good. Like, I don't know, I don't know how to say it. Um, I guess it makes you appreciate how good Eddie Guerrero really was. And Two, two Cold Scorpio is, is here, which I don't know if you noticed, but in the last ECW episode that I did, I kept calling him Scorpio Sky from ECW. So I'll try not to do that here. But, um... Yeah, like you said, it's, it was it was okay. It was I, I did laugh because Joey Styles, God bless him, he's trying to put this over. Like he, he says to quote him, he's this is outstanding mat wrestling, and he says this while the two guys are literally just in there holding each other's ankles. <laughs> so, like it is very you know MMA wasn't what it is today so I guess there wasn't a, you know a lot of knowledge on that so it's the fact that they weren't bleeding and fucking pile driving each other it was like, oh this is some scientific red just it, it was great it was it was fine yeah you gotta say they were a little sloppy you gotta start somewhere though yeah there was a fun spot where Hector does a snap mare onto Scorpio on the outside and goes for a pin so I don't know if that's just like a fish out of water moment for him. Like he thinks, oh, it's ECW. There's no rules. I can just pin him on the outside. And, um, so I thought that was, <laughs> if that's what they were going for, I kind of like that. But uh, at the end, Scorpio hits a stun gun followed by a 450 splash for the win. And uh, yeah, the match had some good spots. But overall, something just didn't click for me. I don't, I don't think the crowd was ready for it either. Yeah, I don't think it ever got out of first gear. And the, the sloppiness and the them not getting along and 
the weird stuff with Hector like screaming at the referee and being the heel. It just I don't know. I don't think the fans gave a shit. I didn't yeah. give a shit. It was eleven minutes and nineteen seconds too long. Yeah, the face heel dynamic was another thing. It wasn't really clear who was the good guy, who was the bad guy here. And there was a moment where Scorpio d- hit a super kick with the most blatant leg slap I've ever seen in my life. And I don't know if the crowd just turned on it at that point. It's like, ah, fuck this. But uh, whatever it is, it is. I'll tell you this. This is a match that happened. You know what? There's And again, as you progress through ECW, there's a lot of matches that happen. <laughs> well, something that also happened is a barbed wire baseball bat match. This just sounds like some bullshit you find in Fire Pro Wrestling or something, but it's a match that actually happened. Battle of the Brothers. We got Ian Rotten versus Axel Rotten. And uh, man, I, I could go beat for beat on what this match was, but ultimately it was just... Th- this is them leaning into the extreme of extreme championship wrestling. This is, as, as the match title says, it's a barbed wire baseball bat. It's just one bat though i thought it would, they were both going to start out with barbed wire baseball bats but i think it's ian that comes out with the bat and then axel comes out with no bat he's like what the hell so he just goes to the crowd and grabs a chair and then ian's like swinging the bat at him and then he's axel's blocking it with the chair and you know they fight in the crowd they're both bleeding all over the place there's just so much hiv all over this arena <laughs> like it is an insane i'm surprised you're here to, to tell the story being, you know, <laughs> at some of these shows. As am I, as am I. Just, uh, yeah, like I said, so much blood, man. You got, the, they're raking the bat over each other's face. They're they're hitting each other in the legs. And then the worst part, man, it'll stick in their leg and then they'll rip it out. It was, um, it was a lot. It was like 15 minutes into it where you saw the first wrestling move, which was a pile driver from Ian onto Axel. Um... Then Ian, he puts the bat on top of Axel as Axel is laying on his back. And then Ian goes for a splash from the second rope onto the bat that's laying on Axel. It's like, that's kind of stupid. I think even Joey Styles is like, oh, that was very smart. So there's a lot of that kind of stuff. Um, Ian attacks at, and he, he takes a piece of the barbed wire. Wait, when did this match end? I don't even know who, who won this match. Can you tell me? Uh, Axel Rotten won this match. I don't even know if it matters. Honestly. It was, you know, it was supposed to be a barbed wire bat on a pole match, but it never got to the pole because Ian attacked the ringside attendant and took the barbed wire bat. Oh, is that true? Yes. You sure they just didn't want to shell out for a pole? I don't know, man. They didn't have it in the budget. <laughs> you know, that's was... a good question. I mean, I don't know how early into ECW Paulie stopped paying everybody, so there may have been a budget at this time. Yeah, that's very true. That's very true. But uh, I think the violence, I think the idea was to present the violence to you. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I don't know. Are you going to go all the way to the end of the of ECW? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah, for sure. Like, just so you know, if this match wasn't enough and the last match at Double Tables wasn't enough, they feud until uh, July of 1995. And I'm pretty sure they have a that's match great news. every single show. Now that that is great to hear. You know, it's funny. Back in the day, I bought a DVD. It was called like the bloodiest matches in ECW history. And it, one match that was on it was their match. It was the uh, with the broken glass on their, ah, their yes. wrist tapes. The Taipei death match. Yes, that's what it's called. And I think that's like, I don't know if it's the next show or soon. Soon after this, they have that match. And I, I have vague memories of it. But I remember that being just sickening to watch. Yeah, I think that's where they I know they have a strap match. I think they have another barbed wire bat, barbed wire chairs match. There's a hair versus hair match somewhere in there. Oh no. Not those yeah. beautiful locks. Yeah, I know. Like that Ian Rotten, that head of hair. Yeah, everyone wishes they had that. Um yeah. and then I think it culminates with the Taipei death match. Oh, that's good. That's good. Is there any stakes, any titles, or is it just to uh see who's has the, the love of their parents? Uh, I think it was to see who has the love of the parents and who gets that last slice of pizza. Oh, you know what? That's worth fighting for. I get. I, I mean, it's. Not, I mean, it depends. I mean, there's eight slices and there's two of them, so you think they would just go four and four? But I'm sure uh, Ian's a slob, so he takes an extra slice. 
Like so Axel's in the bathroom fucking uh, shitting his brains out. Oh, okay. Is that the dynamic here? I must yeah, have well, missed Axel, the backstory. Well, Axel, he has got like stomach issues. He shits his pants a lot. I'm going to tell you, I don't know how both of these guys don't have stomach issues or, or asshole issues after this match between because of what I saw. It was just... Uh, it was brutal. I mean, are there were there any spots that stuck out to you in this I, nonsense? I thought for a brawl, uh, it was really good. But at about the nine and a half minute mark, I felt like they just ran out of shit to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, which is a shame because as you go down your rabbit hole, you'll see Axel Rotten can actually wrestle. Like he's a train. Like, yeah, there's like a match where he's doing like tackles and drop downs and you're like, Holy shit, Axel Rotten can wrestle, but wow. he's pigeonholed himself into this extreme uh bar bar baseball bat killer. Um Yeah, I didn't like the finish. What was the finish again? I, I think I was like so distracted by everything going on that I didn't even note what the finish was. He pancake slams Ian onto the bat and then he pins him. And I was like, Well, this right. is a weird finish. Kind of anticlimactic. Yeah, because they beat the shit out of each other. They went all around the place. He, he suplexing uh, Ian on the bleachers. He, they're everywhere. And then you just mm-hmm. pancake slam him on the barbed wire bat, and that's it. I yeah. Know, I felt like I guess flat. I guess, you know, Devil's Advocate, it could be just the culmination of everything. It just kind of like ran out of gas kind of deal. Um, but I see what you're saying. They didn't really build up to it. It was just kind of action, 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 and it's done. Right, and then after the match, it's not done either because he, Ian then, after he loses, he attacks Axel and he goes after yes. his leg. Ah, fucking... The so really, match. did anybody win? Because <laughs> he grabs the, like a piece of the barbed wire and then wraps it around Axel's eyes and then uh, more bat shots. And Joey Styles is like, we haven't seen the last of Ian versus Axel Rotten. He's like... No shit, buddy. <laughs> oh, you have not. You know who won? The fans. The fans won this match. Did they? Did they though? I guess if you're if you're into that, if you were there, maybe <laughs> I don't fucking know. Yeah, yeah. That that's one thing about these matches that they had is it seemed like they kind of played to the live audience more so. Although this one, it was be- you could see more of what they were doing more so than their last match, but it seemed like they were like kind of playing to the live crowd more so than the TV audience. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, and even if you were playing the TV audience, the degenerates that are up at two o'clock in the morning watching this are probably really into this or really fucked yeah. up on drugs. I mean, it could be both. I think. I think it has to be both, actually. It don't make you a bad person. Yeah, <laughs> but speaking of bad person, who man? We got Marty Janetti. That's right. That Marty Jannetty in ECW in 1995. It's almost like because when I first saw this, I was like, man, that seems kind of out of place for him. But like in 2021, knowing who Marty Jannetty is, it's like that seems about right that he'd be in ECW. Um, But I'll tell you this, man, I expected this to be a shit show, but I didn't hate this match at all. No, I'm with you. Look. I shit on the Rockers a lot because I'm a Bret Hart guy and I fucking hate Shawn Michaels. And I think Marty Jannetty yeah. was just a prop for Shawn Michaels. Um, but Marty Jannetty could go. In 1994, he could still go. 1995, he could go. Um, and I really, I've never, I don't remember, what, I don't want to say I've never seen this, but I think I've watched more wrestling than I can remember. Yeah. So watching this back again was actually a lot of fun. And knowing that these guys kind of have a, a a strange history. Uh, they were after they did an angle in WWF in 1990 where they shelved Shawn Michaels. Shane Douglas stepped in to be Marty's tag team partner for like two weeks. Oh, really? Like how show runs. They were like the new rockers and they feuded oh. with the Orient Express. Uh, but that was not long for this world. Man, I wouldn't have guessed. Uh, so I guess that's what he's alluding to, Shane Douglas, at the beginning of this match. He grabs the mic, and he kind of alludes to their WWF past, how they've driven up and down the roads together and all that stuff. And he says that he doesn't want to fight. He just wants to have a wrestling match, which I'm sure is what the Philadelphia crowd wants to hear after <laughs> watching Ian and Axel Rotten just bludgeon each other for eight hours, seemingly. And... um you know, Marty's getting some pretty decent booze in the beginning, but I think by the end of it, he kind of turns the crowd and they're cheering for him, um, which is the mark of a good worker, I guess. But um, 
yeah, the match gets off underway. Um, Shane Douglas offers his hand for a handshake. He's like, I just want a good wrestling match. And then he tries to you know, pull him in. You know how that whole deal goes. Shenanigans. Shenanigans aplenty in the beginning. So, But Marty sees it coming. The wily veteran. Um, so they get underway. And then there's automatic <laughs> right off the bat, there's a we want funk chant from the crowd. Because, you know, Return of the Funker, obviously, the show's called. So everybody's just wanting Terry Funk. And nobody wants to see Marty Jannetty win the ECW title, at least in the beginning. Um, but yeah, just a really stark contrast from the previous match. Just really just quality wrestling. No real weapons. No, not a lot of it, at least. There's a little bit, I think. But um, the beginning was very slow, but it picks up. Uh, Marty on the outside whips Shane into the barricade, into the crowd. So that kind of gives the ECW kind of feel to it. They kind of they're they're fighting in the crowd, and uh, you can't really see what's going on. But they eventually get back to ringside. Uh, Shane Douglas does like a, a front suplex onto Janetti and makes Janetti land on the steel barricade ringside. So Janetti's ribs are injured at, injured at this point, and that's kind of the story of the rest of the match. Uh, so like Janetti will go for hip tosses and stuff, but he can't because of his ribs. So really good selling from Marty Janetti, which I didn't expect good selling on an ECW show in 1995, but we're getting it here. Um, Janetti takes a crazy bump into the ring post. Sell, like again, just sells it like he got shot out of a cannon. Uh, and then Shane Douglas back body drops Janetti onto a set up steel chair ringside. So, you know, Marty Janetti, he's, he's embracing the ECW, the extreme elements here while also having those, you know, classic wrestling mentalities along with it. Um, but towards the end, the crowd is kind of behind Marty at this point because he's just he's taking all these crazy bumps and really embracing it, like I said. Uh, Marty hits the rocker dropper for a two count, and then Marty then hits an atomic drop followed by a beautiful super kick for another two count. But, and then he, Marty goes for a fist drop off the top rope goes to fist Shane Douglas. But Shane moves out of the way and Shane hits him with a DDT and then pins him with his foot on the ropes. Um, that's not the pins. That's, it's for a two count. Then Marty goes for a Hurricane Rana, but Shane counters into a power bomb and then rolls him up for the win. Joey Styles tries to put over like Shane had the tights, but I didn't see anything. But uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> kind, of, kind of an anticlimactic end to this match but like i said man i I, it really exceeded my expectations for what i expected yeah no i'm with you you had we had joked uh going back and forth before in the weeks leading up to this like oh marty Janetti, shane douglas but man yeah marty marty Janetti was the star of this match he had his working boots on uh he takes that fucking clothesline he does that 360 flip Mm -hmm. um it was just he was a bumping machine and he made he made shane douglas look good and and uh, I hate to sound like a broken record, but as you progress through ECW, you'll see that Paulie is really good at bringing people in to make his guys look really good. Yeah. Uh, but this was great. This was a great match. I really enjoyed it. I suggest my recommendation is if you're going to watch one match from this show, check that match out. You, you don't you don't want to watch Hack Myers? <sighs> um. No. I mean, I, <laughs> if I if you if you're listening to this right and you're like man i don't have time to check out the whole show i'm just gonna watch one match watch this if you have time to watch two please jason's asshole hack myers shit shaw it's great shit shaw jason's asshole that's it (laughs) it should be a fucking t-shirt it should be it will be after this um can i really great can i just tell you something i fucking hate the public enemy (laughs) <laughs> what's that I, I fucking i don't i hate them i hate everything about them i don't get it i hated them in ecw and as i you said don't. earlier i was a sabu mark so they're but they're from the streets st- they're from my fucking balls that's where they're from <laughs> oh no these two fucking hand jobs they're fucking they are nah, hand jobs aren't nah, they nah, nah he fucking comes out in a wheelchair what fucking walk you lazy he's shit. injured he's injured how dare you, sir? Injured. You, you put some respect on Rocco Rock. Put some respect. That, that, that's the me. true Rock. He's a fucking these two fucking assholes. I hate the public <laughs> enemy. I hate the tell public me, enemy. Tell us how you really feel. If if look, it's a coin flip. It's the public enemy or the Dudleys. I hate both of them very much. You hate the I Dudleys? A, I fucking can't stand the Dudleys. 
Why do you hit the Dudleys? You're just a big Hardy Boys fan, I think. Is, no, is the, ugh. Ugh. Oh. hard pass. No, big ele- big Eliminators guy. Love the Eliminators. Oh, that's uh, it's per- Perry Saturn, right? Perry Saturn and John Cronus. Right. Uh, I don't know, man. I was fuck. I was watching ECW and Bubble 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 Ray had the stutter. That's good shit, right? You know, I, I don't know. I just didn't yeah. fuck. And then, and then I was that guy. Like I was that wrestling fan. Like they went to WWF, and I was like, "You're a fucking sellout, fucking mm. sellout." You know, that was fucking, you. Yeah, six months ago, you were talking about how the girl in the front row used to teach a uh, teach your daughter how to suck dick on a pay per view, just <laughs> yelling and screaming. Now you're in fucking WWE, wearing fucking tie dye t shirts and doing the fucking what's up thing. Get out of here. I mean, she. That probably is the dick sucking. That's probably true. That could have been true. Oh no! So. You know, he. I didn't say he was wrong, but they were hot. They were good heels, and then they went to WWF, and I was like, "Fuck these guys." <laughs> well, because why? I don't Tell know. Because I was like invested. I was part of ECW. Like it's such a like fucking douchebag thing to be. Like when your favorite <laughs> band like gets more popular, and like, you fucking sold out. It's like no well, dick they- shit. They made the fucking. They did what's best for them, and now they're making money, and they're making good music, and or maybe not good music. I don't know. I mean, they they brought some of the extreme elements to WWF, right? They brought the tables. Nobody was really using tables in WWF Devon at the time. brought the tables, okay? Not Bubba Ray didn't do oh, shit. He didn't stutter. Yeah. He is a lazy asshole now. Right? They, he now didn't bring Big it. Dick with him. They didn't bring Joe Gertner. They didn't bring Dances with Dudley. They didn't bring Dudley Dudley. They didn't bring Sign Guy Dudley. Who, who takes care of their family like that? I didn't know there were so many Dudleys. Oh, my God. Honest. I think I might have forgot a Dudley. I, kn- I knew about Big Dick. Everybody knows Big Dick Dudley. And then and there's Spike Dudley, obviously. Oh, yeah. Spike. Let's see. Who else? Can I find Dudley? Dudley uh, I'm trying to think of Dudleys. Let's see. There, I said uh, Sign Guy, Dudley, Dudley. Dances with Dudley was an Indian. Wasn't that the like the Harry Potter family? Weren't, weren't there a lot? You know what I'm talking about? The Muggles? The Muggles. No. Yeah. No, oh, man. Muggle is. Oh no! I've I just do a wrestling myself. podcast. I think I have time for fucking? Yeah, I ain't no nerd. I'm not into that Harry Potter. <laughs> fucking Harry Potter. No, I watched the Harry Potter with my wife. She made me watch it. Oh, there it was. Hold on. No, goddamn it! I feel like there's more Dudleys. Oh, there was Snot Dudley. That sounds made up. No, Snot Dudley was a guy. Yeah, how long they last? Oh, he Snot was not around long. Um, uh. He waved 95, so Snot's coming up. And then he got hurt in a jet ski accident, so he was out. Then we got Dances with Dudley. What a shame. Um, and he was an Indian, Native American, excuse me. Oh, how dare you. Uh, we got Fat Dudley, Chubby Dudley. We already talked about Bubba. No, no, different Dudley. Oh, different Fat Dudley. <laughs> yeah, Chubby Dudley. Um, Bubba Ray, yeah. Wait, so was there a Fat Dudley and a Chubby Dudley? Oh, yeah. There were so many Dudleys. No, oh, that's, that's arguably too many Dudleys. I'm going to be honest. Oh, look, I found, here we go. Big Dick, Bubba, Chubby, Dances, Dudley, Dudley, Double Dudley. Double Dudley. Devon, yeah, Dudley Dudley was his name. Devon, That's Sign Guy, Spike, fun. Snot, Big Daddy Dudley. Who's your favorite Dudley? My favorite? Spike is my favorite. Oh, yeah. Who, That's easy. who doesn't love a good underdog? Yeah, yeah. The, uh, the boss. Do you remember that? From like 2004 when he was a heel. Spike Dudley. Spike Dudley uh, was a heel. So I stopped. Uh, I stopped watching wrestling from like the time like WrestleMania 17 until the pipe bomb. Oh wow, man! Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, I took a big, a big, uh, big amount of time off. Mm. So you didn't see Billy and Chuck or uh, I? I Katie have gone Vic. back and seen uh, a bunch. Uh, hot lesbian action. You know, mm. I've uncomfortably watched that with my mother-in-law in the room. Oh, no. <laughs> it's a terrible choice. I mean, it's on. She just sits down. I'm not going to turn it off. Right. Did she like it, though? I don't think she was into the HLA. Uh, whatever you got to tell yourself. She might have been into Chuck and Billy. Yeah, but who wasn't, honestly? That's true. Yeah. Whatever uh, Glad wasn't into it when they found out it was a farce. Oh, no. Just fooled again. Yeah. Let's not make fun of uh, two gay men getting married. How dare you? Speaking about two homos, we got Public Enemy coming up next. No, you Rock said that, Rock. not me. I like them, but I'm not going to say they're homos. I will not speak ill of the dead like that. I mean, I don't know. Although but I think I've already buried a couple dead people on this episode. Buried dead people, huh? Yeah, dug them up, reburied yeah, them. Yeah, we're having fun. 
Very I'm having long. a blast. Are you kidding me? <laughs> yeah. This is great. But we got to talk about Public Enemy here because Rock or Rock is injured. He's in this uh, wheelchair that seems like it's from 1876. It is literally just a piece of metal and two wheels. Like, it's 1995. I feel like they, they had better wheelchairs at the time, but I guess maybe not in Philadelphia. No, not. Are you kidding me? They, they stole it from some homeless man off the street, probably. I would... If I was a gambling man, I bet you that was just laying around the bingo hall and they used it as a prop. You're probably right. But uh, at the previous show, uh, Public Enemy lost their tag titles. And I believe it was Rocco Rock that got choke slammed by 911 off of the uh, little stage area. That's a classic spot. It's in all the highlight reels for ECW. But that's the injury that Rocco Rock sustained here. Um, I don't know if they really specified what kind of, you know, contusions, uh, strains, um, you know, whatever it is. But, uh, you know, the crowd, because and in that tag match from the previous show, it was a tables match. And they, they, they did put both their opponents through the tables, but the ref didn't see the last one. So there was a whole switcheroo action at the end. And so they basically got robbed for, of their titles. And ah, the put, irony. Yeah, because... Well, hold on. I I got a quote here for what they said. Maybe I didn't quote it word for word, but they're they're basically like, "You don't rob public enemy. Public enemy does the robbing because they're thugs. They're gangsters. They're 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 G's as the kids say. Um, but they're they're pissed about that, and they're basically saying that they'll be back for the tag team titles. And there's a title match later in the show. And the team challenging for the titles is Chris Benoit and Dean Malenko. So they, those two gentlemen come out and they, there's a big scuffle. There's a big brouhaha. Johnny Grunge, the one that's not in a wheelchair, tries to fight them both off, tries to fight them both off. But um, the numbers game catches up with them. (laughs) Dean Malenko grabs Rocco Rock because he's in the wheelchair, right? So he grabs the wheelchair and rolls them into Benoit and Benoit closes Rocco Rock out of his wheelchair. Oh, that's I got to say that that's probably one of the worst things Benoit's done, if I got to say so myself in a, in a wrestling ring. Yes. Oh, yes. Well, you know, the whole thing there. But uh, then Benoit then picks him up, puts him back in the chair and then sprints to the ring and throws Rocco Rock into the barricade. Just abusing this handicapped man. Let me tell you, he's not handicapped. All right. Let's not play up that this guy's fucking handicapped. He, he was temper ill. Oh. Mentally, maybe a little bit. Look, if you have but, time to come out and run your gums, wheelchair or not, you better expect a receipt, buddy. And Chris Benoit is not fucking around, all right? There's fucking... gold on the line. All right? That's he doesn't have say. dementia yet. His brain's not turned to mashed potatoes. He's looking to kick your ass. Not yet. And you not got yet. what you deserve, Rocco Rock and Johnny Grunge. Do a fucking sit-up, you slobs. <laughs> fucking Dude. assholes. Dude. Fucking Dude. shitty. I can't believe they were four-time ECW Tag Team Champions. Well, they're just very good wrestlers, I think. So I think and they it's... were fucking over too. People love the goddamn public enemy. Hey, I don't know. Yeah, here Everybody. comes the hot stepper. You fucking assholes. Do you... I can't remember. Do you do you do you like the public enemy? Any day that ends in Y, no. Okay. I'm out. I'm out on that's, the public enemy. You know who I fair. like? The fucking APA for beating the shit out of him when they were yeah. playing WWF, all right? And I don't even like much, Bradshaw. Yeah. That's, that's the extent of my knowledge of the public enemy at this point. But as I tie further in the rabbit hole and watch them win so many more titles, I'll, uh, oh, I'll sorry, enjoy it, I'm spoiler, sure. they're four-time tag team champions. Well, that just ruined my... I'm just going to quit the podcast now that, now that I know all that. All right, well, the, um, I have a tendency to make people quit, so... <laughs> my job uh, here is done. Yes, sir. So now we have the title match here. ECW World Tag Team titles are on the line. We have the champions, Sabu and the Tasmaniac, along with 911 and Paul E. Dangerously versus Chris Benoit and Dean Malenko, who, of course, are already out there beating the shit out of uh, a half handicap team here. Um, and I think they're they're starting to stop calling Taz the Tasmaniac. I think they're like transitioning into calling them just Taz but he still has the goofy wig and the, the Flintstones gear. Uh, that's not a wig, dude. That was his hair. <laughs> or not. Yeah. Not the wig, but it, you know, Oh, I mean, <laughs> it was bad enough to be a wig, but that's his you're when you reach like ECW Taz at his, at his highest, you're going to be like, this is that guy. Can I tell you something about Taz? 
you, yes, please. I, I just learned like in the past month that he's white. Yeah, he's like Italian. Oh, uh, I, I had been thinking he was black my entire life. No, no, he just. He I don't know what a, it is. Gets that tan on good. He's just very Italian, I guess. Oh yeah, he's got that Hogan hot dog skin. That's. <laughs> That's yeah, he does. He's very Italian. Peter Peter Sercha, Peter Sercha. Peter, yeah, yeah, something like that. Uh, we vended him once, and we ate our fucking dick on it. Wait, what? We vend so he did like an appearance at a, yeah, yeah. a wrestling show, and we right. were exploring the uh, the vending where you you know you pay uh-huh. to have, and then everything like you pay a flat fee, yeah, and then whatever you sell is yours. Mm-hmm. So you ate, we, you ate your dick there. Oh, we I fucking could not stop laughing. Could <laughs> could not. St- it was so funny. God, I believe it. I and believe that's it. when we stopped vending wrestlers. We had some success. We had some some success with Johnny Morrison and Ricky Steamboat. But there was also many failures along the way. Man, what an eclectic group. What? To, yeah, we did Scorpio. Scorpio was good once. Yeah. Too cold yeah. or a sky? Too cold. Mm, I see. Cold and Davy Boy Smith Jr. They were Man, fun. Yeah. I bet. Yeah. But we ate our shit on Taz. Well, you know. I was like, you know what? It can't I'm be all wins. This game. <laughs> For the amount of money that was on the line, that one should have been a win. Yeah. <laughs> it's a shame. Sorry to hear that. It's okay. You live and you learn. Yeah. Well, at least you didn't get your neck broken by Chris Benoit. Much like Seth Boo did here, which. Like just a few months ago, it was that famous spot where Benoit throws him up for a back body drop and then Sabu lands on his neck. But Sabu's out here wrestling. So uh, I don't know if he just put some uh, Gorilla Glue on it or uh, took a lot of uh, Advil. But uh, whatever it is. Look, you don't become homicidal, suicidal, genocidal if you're not wrestling with a broken neck. I, I suppose that's true. That's actually a very good point you bring up. Uh, but we got a tag team title match here. Seems to be tornado style, I guess, because that's what ECW is. Um, Taz, man, he is just suplexing the shit out of everybody. I, I love watching Taz wrestle, especially in the early days. German suplexes Benoit right on his head. That was just a one little CTE tick for for old Chrissy boy there. Um, Dean Malenko's in there, another really underrated guy. He see, he locks in what seems to be like a reverse figure four onto Taz and he has this hold in as Benoit is stomping him in the head and this pretty much takes out Taz. So this, this kind of submission injures his legs, which uh, causes nine one one to pick up Taz and carry him to the back. I don't know what the mentality was there. Like he was going to like tape him up or shoot him up with something, but, um, and then Dean Malenko and Benoit. So it's essentially a handicap match at this point. They're beating up on Sabu and they try to do a back double backdrop on the Sabu, which is the move that broke his neck. And I don't know if it was intended to be fucked up, like like they were trying to break his neck again, but they, it almost happened again. Um, they go for it a second time, and then uh, I believe Sab- Sabu counters it. Yes, yeah, Sabu counters it. And then we get the classic Sabu spot with the chair set up, the runs up it, topes off the top rope to the outside. Beautiful stuff. But then we get Sabu being a maniac. He lays a table on the top rope in the corner and sets up a chair on top of the setup table. Very stable, very stable. And then he's going for something. I don't know what his plan is here, but um, Malenko just shoves him right off. And the, him, Sabu, along with the folded chair, just fall to the outside. Sabu kind of falls on. It was a very brutal looking spot. Very sloppy. And then um, Benoit throws Sabu back in there, puts him back up on that setup table in the corner. They both get up there. They're both rickety as shit up there. And Benoit fucking power bombs him off the top rope on this table. And that gets them the win. We have new tag team champions and Chris Benoit and Dean Malenko. This is a lot of chaos, this match. A lot, a lot of smoke and mirrors here to get this, uh, to get this story over. I am with. I don't understand 
why 911 brings Taz to the back? Like, is yeah. there like a, a shaman back there? Is the Shah gonna, is he gonna use some, Ooh. the Shah on him to fix him? Because he never comes back out. Uh, and, and like you said, it's a handicap match. Uh, with some pretty wild spots there. And I think the appeal of Sabu at this time was that his unorthodox, crazy shit. He might was, die. Yeah. Well, it was people. Look, again. I can't really say anything because I was trying to give myself Sabu scars in the fucking mirror at 16 years old. <laughs> right. So it was, wor- I guess it was working. Um, yeah. But yeah, yeah this crowd is, loved uh, it. crowd was into it. If nothing yeah, the else. The crowd was definitely into it. And this is another like, you know, it's great. It's a great piece of storytelling to get us to where we're going. But you know, right. you'll find out there are, there's a huge bump in the road on that story. So, Oh, I bet. I oh, can't wait you have, for it. I don't even know if you, I don't want to spoil it. I feel bad. I have, I know all this, I have all this knowledge that I can bestow upon you, but mm. I don't want to ruin it for you. Is it the, 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 the barbed wire match with Sabu and Terry Funk? Or is no, it a different no, bump? No. Okay. no, no. That's that barbed wire match is in 1997. Oh, okay. This is, you know, we're leading to, you know, cause post match, obviously the public enemy doesn't need a wheelchair now to, to run down and attack after well, Benoit gets on the mic and goads them out there. Miracles happen. 911's throwing fucking Taz around like he's a sack of potatoes. I mean, <laughs> literally just brings them back out there to just chuck them at people. Love let, it. let me volley this, Taz. 911 is going to carry you to the ring and he's going to throw you like a sack of potatoes after you've not participated in a match. Volley, sir. Can you can you do the rest of the episode as Paul Heyman? I don't think I can. <laughs> I'm actually mad that we didn't start out like that. Um, <laughs> well, sir, the check is in the mail. Do not cash it until you speak to me. Okay, on second thought, I think it's enough of that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like you said, uh, Public Enemy comes out after the match, and there is a whole uh, kerfuffle. I would describe it. Yeah, everybody's fighting everybody. Nine one as all of everybody's fighting everybody. Nine one one is in the middle of the ring and just choke slams the shit out of the referee for no reason, <laughs> just to do it. A, like like literally like palming a basketball, just fucking just drives him through the ring, damn near. Um, but yeah, that's that, that's how that match ends. Just, that's just, just like his a gimmick. That's all nine one one does. Doesn't like Paul Heyman do the thing with the phone where he's like. Nine and the crowd chants yeah. with them. One. That's pretty cool. I like that like, stuff. I I can't. I've only seen one nine one one match, and it was when he wrestled Doink the Clown. Oh, was that good? How many stars was that one? I'll tell you what, and I think this is Eastern Championship Wrestling. I think this was the tournament to crown the NWA World Champion, where Shane yeah. threw the belt down. Uh, and there's a great angle that they were gonna run that they never got to do, but he fucking choke slams Doink, and like I don't know. 10 seconds like he beats him it's a squash match mm-hmm. but then matt born does a gimmick where he's got like half the face paint on and he's like he's saying he's born again but it doesn't go anywhere he was with shane douglas like i thought that had a lot of was was matt that. born in ecw at that point he he was playing he what he was playing doing the clown right but i thought he was in wwf for no at that point he had already so Matt I guess Bourne, maybe it, yeah, yeah yeah matt born was the original doink right and then they put steve kern in as the double for like WrestleMania nine when they were doing the thing with crush. Okay. And then yeah, at yeah. some point, uh, Ray Apollo became doink when Matt Bourne left. Right. And then okay, what yeah. better way than to, to get nine one one over than have him choke slam doink from the WWF. Yeah. I mean, that'll get the crowd over with you, but yeah, cause I'm watching the WWF in this era too. And, doinks there. And for some reason I just assumed it was Matt Bourne. I didn't really think much of it, but yeah, you have to find out what, time period because it gets a little muddy with the doinks honestly him he's just surrounded with all the the little doinks at this point so i it's it's a lot to take in it's more than i want to research to be honest oh really okay <laughs> weird shit like that i need uh, to know all about the doinks so I, let me tell you something right as somebody who's been me. to the ecw arena if mm-hmm. i got to the building and they were like the main event is cactus jack against dc drake i would have been like who the fuck is dc drake <laughs> You're right yeah, so do you not know anything about DC Drake? I know he was a guy who wrestled in like the East Coast in Pennsylvania, and he may yeah. have won like a tri-state, you know, re- independent wrestling title that meant you know cost as much as his glass right yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. I know, I know very little about DC Drake. His Wikipedia is 
Slim Pickens. It's literally, he's the guy that wrestled in Philadelphia and wrestled Cactus Jack once. But I guess he was big in the ind- independent scene in Philadelphia because the crowd seemed, I mean, it was kind of a good reaction for him, I guess. I think they were expecting Terry Funk, which definitely hindered that. But, um, so yeah, well, you bring it up because now we're at the main event. Cactus Jack versus DC Drake uh, was scheduled, I guess. I don't know if it was really scheduled, but in uh, kayfabe, at least, it was scheduled to be Sandman versus Cactus Jack. But Sandman is injured at, the, at this point, and I am not surprised because if you have not seen the Texas death match between Cactus Jack and Sandman from Double Tables, you owe it to yourself to watch it because it's, it's literally just a man getting hit in the head with things very hard for a long time. And um, so I don't know if <laughs> Sandman's, if he's he c- c- concussed, I feel like that wouldn't stop them at this point because it's fucking ECW. But um, so Sandman isn't here to compete, but he's out here cutting a promo before the match along with woman. And they basically introduce the stand in for Sandman, the guy that's going to face Cactus Jack. He's, they have this box out here. It's like not quite a casket, but it's like kind of a casket. And DC Drake pops out and then it's like, oh my God, it's DC Drake. Joey Styles is losing his shit over it. And everybody is like, who the fuck is this guy? But uh, it's all in all reality, it's not really a match. It's almost it's borderline a squash. Cactus Jack gets the win. Um, just a lot of mindless weapon shots. This match chairs stop signs um but ultimately cactus jack hits the double arm ddt in the ring for the win but this match is really just an avenue to have this final segment on the show happen so cactus jack gets the win and then right after the three count sandman's in there and hits cactus with the most like aesthetically pleasing Singapore cane shot I've ever seen in my life. Just fucking bashes him in the back of the head with it. Sweats flying everywhere. Um, so he's beating him with a kendo stick, but then Cactus Jack starts to fight back, but then woman gets involved. And then, uh, so they're, they're all fighting each other. It's all crazy. Uh, Cactus Jack starting to get the upper hand and they brawl to the outside where that mysterious, mysterious box was. And I, I think I looked away for one second and then looked back. And then all of a sudden there was somebody was covered in this black cloak. I guess they like went into the box and came out. So it, it's it's supposedly Sandman's under this cloak because he just he's got knocked to the box. Oh, he has his cloak on him and he gets in the ring and he takes the cloak off and Terry Funk. It's um the crowd goes fucking bananas for the funkster. And um Pretty much just a beat down on Cactus Jack until uh, Shane Douglas comes out weirdly. And they do a whole thing where they're they're teasing. Yeah, I guess a new four horsemen with Terry Funk, uh, Sandman, Shane Douglas and woman. I guess I don't know. Um, so they're like teasing that Shane Douglas is going to join them and going to beat down on Cactus Jack. But then Shane Douglas turns on him. I think he hits Funk with the, the belt or something. Um, but then the, the link that I that I found, the show just kind of abruptly ended. I don't know if that's how the actual show ended. But um, it ends with, you know, Sh- Sh- Shane Douglas is fighting back against uh, Terry Funk and Sandman. So a lot of shenanigans here to end the show. What do you think of it all? Uh, I think ECW does a great job of, and maybe I misspoke. I'm sure it was advertised as Cactus Jack for Sandman. Uh, as the main Who event knows? because yeah. of yeah because of his concussion probably uh they had to they had to pivot and and go with something different here um ECW is really great at, at really delivering uh huge surprises um, mm-hmm. and it, it, it's it's hard to get it over on the ECW marks because they are the smart marks um yeah especially in 94 95 96 uh I hate Terry Funk I hate everything about Terry Funk I'm like the I'm a really weird wrestling fan. If you listen to the the Monday Night Show, the Shining Wizards Wrestling Podcast, of course, which I'm a part of. I don't think I've plugged it yet, so I'm a failure at what I do. <laughs> um, I hate uh, a variety of people for no other good reason than just stupid shit. Like Terry Funk is old and he bleeds out of his ears, so that really <laughs> bothers me. Like 
You're fine with blood everywhere else, just not the ears. Right, like who fuck you? If you're so old that you're bleeding out of your fucking ears, you That's probably shouldn't be in a wrestling ring, Terry Funk. Yeah, I'm, um, yeah. And I don't think you mentioned it post match because uh, Dreamer comes out too, but they have that storyline where right. yep. Dreamer is uh, Funk's protege, so Dreamer won't touch uh, Terry Funk. And Terry, punch me, you dumb son of a bitch! <laughs> He's fucking yelling and screaming like a fucking drunk Texan. Todd Pentangale, mother's a whore! Oh no. Get out of here. Did Terry he say Funk. that? Did Terry Funk call uh, Todd Pentangale's mother a whore? Yeah, I'm on uh, Shotgun Saturday Night in the oh. 1990-something. They were in Texas in a bar, and he just wrestled like Steve Austin, I think, before he was Stone Cold. He was just like the ringmaster. What a, what a cast of characters. Yeah, again, I know way too much about nothing. No, I love it. I love it. My wife's like, I can't believe people listen to you talk about the shit I hate. <laughs> Poor lady. Like, come on, come do a watch along with me. It'll be fun. Yeah, she could have joined. I would have been more than happy to talk about DC oh. Drake with her. Nah, she, pff, you're fucking, you think I can get her to sit down and watch two and a half hours of ECW? <laughs> right, mind. Sorry, my fiance watched an ECW show with me and it was a Taz match was on. And she was like, where do, where does he put his balls in that singlet? So that, that was her input. So Yeah, I do enjoy the women's perspective because they do ask a lot of interesting questions. Interesting is a word interesting as a word yeah like if they like my wife doesn't watch wrestling so she if it's on she has questions right why that's fair doing that what is this why does this guy have pink eye <laughs> well i don't know lots of assholes in wrestling as, as we've covered right. well she, I, I used to do a segment on the monday night show where she would watch monday night raw with me and i would take notes and then i would just read the notes to the guys and there was a there was ryback had like pink eye on one episode <laughs> And she was like, oh, the feed me corn guy's got pink eye. And I'm like, his eye is kind of fucked up. What's wrong with his eye? His eye was like red for like two weeks. Man, is that when you jumped back in the wrestling after your, your hiatus? It was right I back? Jumped, I jumped back in at the CM Punk pipe bomb. But I didn't just like jump back in. Like when I jumped in, it was like, you know, I was like, oh, well, what's popular now? Ring of Honor, Shakara. Mm. I watched some TNA. Like I just, I have an addictive personality and it's a problem. So... Yeah, I went you know. all in. Yeah, you know, res- wrestling addiction is uh, the the least of your worries, I think. I'll tell that to my wife when they're <laughs> some fucking pa- package shows up every day, and I don't know what's in it. And when I open it, she it's just another PCO uh, wrestling buddy. Yeah, well, there were six of them that showed up in a giant box. Is that is that accurate? Is that true? Yes, there's PCO, and then there's the Briscoe brothers are behind me, too. Oh, I thought it was six PCOs. I was like, no, no, man, I would not that order is six psychotic. <laughs> I also co- I collect a lot of wrestling figures, too. So No, I, I can definitely... I don't want to start doing that because it can get real out of hand real fast. And I know I'm, I'm a very obsessive person when it comes to that kind of stuff, too. So that's something that could ruin my life, let me tell you. Yeah, it's bad. I, and I, I got in on the AEW figures mm-hmm. from Jump. But I order two of every series because I have to open one and keep one <laughs> on card. All right, you got to make uh, them wrestle, I'm right? Quick, no, they are all the, they're all displayed. I have a bunch of like on the other oh. on the other. You're side. not just sitting crisscross applesauce on your bed, going. Kush, kush, kush. Turn the computer. Hell yeah! That's awesome. That's yeah, goals. So. Uh, a little I'm man cave action. Out. I love it. I'm running out of room, though. It's all right. You can take over your bedroom. No, no, no. She'll kill me. You could put a shelf. Just one shelf. But, you know. There's no such thing as one shelf in my <laughs> life. There is a pro. There is. Yeah. And my friends don't do me any. She set up a discord for the podcast. And all my friends are in there. And every once in a yeah. while, they're like, hey, Matt, when's this showing up? And she's like, what? And I'm like, nothing. Don't worry. <laughs> nothing. Nothing at all. Don't worry about it. I had entertained. Uh, our video was selling all his ECW DVDs a couple years ago for like a G note. Yeah. And I'd entertained, like he had everything, all the fan cams and all the really, and I was entertaining it, but I was like, I like, I like being married. So I'm not going <laughs> to, yeah, you had to debate it though. Yeah. You had to get weigh the pros and cons. I'm not gonna, well, I mean, how could you look for a G note, right? How could you not want to see the fallout of this, of this return of the funker? Um, I'd be, probably pretty fine without seeing the fallout of this I'm right be honest. and then oof, man the fucking the ecw spot shows come on mm, you know what you make a good point 
No, 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 think about the fan it. cam, the guy at the ringside who can't hold a fucking camera looks like Michael J. Fox is running <laughs> around the goddamn ring. Look, man, the quality of this show that we watched was about as rough as I can get. As far as you know, like the scrambled kind of, but it brings you back to the time, I guess, of watching yeah. it live. Yeah, I have a friend who used to watch ECW all the time, and then when they got like a new ring apron, he was like, "It's not the same." They got mm. a new ring apron. I'm like, "You sound like an idiot." Stop. <laughs> That's where he crosses the line. Stop. I'm like, fucking Michael. Uh, Mike Awesome just fucking brained Masato Tanaka, and you're worried about the. But guy there's a logo on the mat, so these guys are sellouts. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, no, wait till they go to the WWF, then you call them sellouts. Oof, man. But uh, <laughs> you're still all hot about the Dudleys, aren't you? I'm hot about a lot of things. There's, I got a lot of issues that I got to work out. Man, I'm sorry to hear that. Like Taz going to WWF and then doing the job for fucking Triple H. You don't like jumpsuit Taz. No, just another victim. Yeah, I don't like he, he was like the biggest. He was the guy in ECW and then he goes to the land of the Giants. You don't like doing... him getting beat up by Stone Cold every week for virtually no reason. No. He got his belt ripped off his pants and he whipped with it. You know, he didn't like that. No, I was also a Sabu guy. So like I hated fucking Taz for barely legal. Then he creates his own fucking mm. who creates their own fucking title. That's too, yeah, at least, you know, it didn't come back. Right. Right. God forbid he shows up at another promotion and he brings in a fucking <laughs> fake title and he puts it on somebody. It's and fake. I, you show sure respect to the machine, Brian Cage. He's, I he's, can, I'll respect the machine. Uh, I won't respect your fake fucking title that means nothing. <laughs> it gets defended. It gets defended on AEW, so it seems he's pretty fucking, real to me. Fucking laid down for Sabu after he had him beat, and that's how Sabu became the FTW champion. Bunch of horse shit. I'm still mad about it, huh? I'm mad about a lot of things. <laughs> I had a lot of wrestling rage. Well, are you mad about this show? If you had to give Return of the Funker 1995 a rating out of 10, what do you think you'd give it? Give it a six. Yeah? Yeah. You know what? For all the uh, for all the bad, I like the blood and the barbed wire bat match. Um, you know, I, I did say it went a little long. I like the tag title match. I like the, the world title match. Funk as a surprise is awesome, is even though yeah. I hate him because he bleeds out of his ears because he's a thousand years old. <laughs> yep. Um, and to your point, anytime you can see Hack Myers, it's a good thing. Yes, I, Hack Myers bumps any show up a few ticks. I think. Um, you're gonna, you're gonna, you look, you're gonna wade through a lot of dog shit before you get to some really good ECW shows. Yeah, but yeah. I think they're be- on their way up. Yeah, eventually, yeah, ECW begins to uh, shine up a little bit. But speaking of shine. The Shining Wizards podcast. Uh, where can everybody listen to you guys and find you guys? Uh, on, on all forms of social media, at Wizards Podcast. ShiningWizards.com is the website. We are available on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher. Uh, every Monday night, live on Rant, EMRadio.com, or Facebook.com slash Wizards Podcast. Uh, we are finally getting back in the studio with each other on july 12th so nice. i don't know when this drops i, I don't know uh it'll be schedule is. Two day, and this, this wednesday great well i will be sure to promote it tonight well when when, awesome. when i do the show or on monday night when i do the show oh K- <laughs> K-Fabe, bro get terminator timeline in, in the past <laughs> fucking worst God, I'll never <laughs> I, there's a reason why i don't do other podcasts I'm a disaster. <laughs> there's a quota on asshole references that i need to meet so for that reason you'll, you'll definitely be back on it i'm point. your guy <laughs> i'm your no. guy look i spent uh, last week i spent the whole i spent about 20 minutes talking about hell in the cell uh and just saying that i know uh alexa bliss has pictures of them having a luau and she's stuffing her face with fucking larry steve i know she ate that fucking thing. <laughs> i don't give a shit i don't give a fuck what you think you go on uh-huh. instagram oh, i'm sorry about your pig that bitch ate that pig she cut out the disease part and her and whatever fucking pop oh. star she's married to, they ate the shit out of Larry Steve, okay? Larry Steve, egg and cheese is for everybody. Is that all you have to do is cut out the disease part and then boom, bing, bing, boom, you got some bacon? You know what? I don't have a pig as a pet because that's not a realistic thing, so I don't know. But I just assume if my wife, who is Asian, was going to eat the cat, she would cut out <laughs> the bad part, okay? Thank you for specifying that she's asian it really yeah, well, helps the context. it's my excuse to make fun of asian people because i married an asian woman well i am uh 27 asian i'll tell you this i have eaten zero cats in my life so like a very arbitrary number 27 
that's what uh, ancestry has told me. So you don't like round up. Nope, twenty seven percent and one uh, percent die, which is some weird Chinese thing. Um, but <laughs> okay, Chris ben- Chris Benoit is also one percent die. Oh, he's he's a hundred percent die. <laughs> he's three hundred percent die actually. When you're okay. <laughs> oh, but yes, so that's the Shining Wizard. Recipe. So yeah, if you want more of that, check out the Shining Wizards podcast. <laughs> oh boy, I'm doing a. I mean, you might enjoy it. I don't. Know. We no, have some it, cool guests from time to yeah. time. Trust me, anybody that listens to me will will love your show. Um, I've, I've started listening to it recently. Y'all so do sorry. a great job. You know what? I'm I'm pretty demented myself, which is why I brought you on. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, you had a one in three shot. I mean, if you had Tony on, he would have talked about 4chan for an hour. So, Oh, man. Well, we'll stick with you for now. Um. <laughs> I mean, he's very knowledgeable. He also went to many ECW shows back in the day. Yeah. Well, uh, maybe but we do he's a, a little weird. So. Maybe we do a threesome sometime. It's ECW. Oh, like, uh, uh, tr- like a, the night the line was crossed. Triple threat dance. There you go. Sabu, Terry Funk, and Shane Douglas. That's fun. Yeah, it all ties together three-way it does three, but that yeah. was in 94 that was before they got extreme oh well go find another fucking podcast to cover that with i'm not doing it <laughs> it's a fuck an hour three-way dance in 1994 that's a lot i'd rather drink a fucking cup of aids that's a, a cup of aids a whole cup, cup not yeah like uh maybe like an eight ouncer just a little shot maybe i think would suffice probably i gotta see if my antibodies work so yeah a cup is the true test. And I could, and let's be, I mean, I could shed a few pounds, so. Right, that, that's the issue here. Is, Look, is if the, AIDS gets me down like 40 pounds and then I can get some of that Magic Johnson money, I'm good, bro. Oh, is that is that what works? Is that why Magic Johnson has money? Is because he has AIDS? Or he doesn't so, have AIDS, he has HIV. That's what I learned from South Park. If you want a cup of HIV, you could go hit up Max Magic Johnson. Now, see, now we're just throwing out three letter word things that I don't understand. You know, yeah, HIV, KKK, and all that stuff. Wow. But, anyways, <laughs> that will definitely not help you lose weight. I don't know how we end this. I feel like there's I don't know. no. Um, I mean, this is your show, dude. I don't know how you, how do you end it? Do you say goodbye? Do I hang up? Is there, is there like a post show conversation? Ah, uh, oh, man. No, normally I'm just like, hey, thanks. For, I really appreciate you for making the time to do this, but. It's like a weird transition from talking about drinking AIDS. Um, I guess we could just like, maybe you could like walk away and then I guess it stop. Like if I walk away, will you play the Incredible Hulk walking away music? Sure. I'll edit it in post. Oh, I don't want you to edit anything. That's a pain in the ass. No, I, I'm, I'm OCD as fuck. So I, I edit everything. Oh, okay. Good for, hey, God bless you. I don't edit fuck anymore. I'm like, <laughs> I get like a text after the show. We should edit this. I'm like, fuck you. I'm making dinner and this shit's processing. So you're beat. Yeah. If you didn't like what you said, that's on you, cuz. Return of the Thunker. Return of the Thunker. <clears throat> you know, sometimes I just wonder how many people listen to this point of the podcast. So sometimes I just fuck around to see if anybody's listening. Um, (laughs) but, uh, yes, once again, thank you to Matt from the shining wizards wrestling podcast. Once again, check out their podcast, wherever you listen to podcasts and check them out live every Monday at 6 45 Eastern on rant EM radio, watch them on Facebook as well. And all of that in the description below, check them out, give them a kiss, slap their ass apronbump.com for all my episodes all my social media if you enjoy these ecw reviews go to apronbump.com hit the episodes tab at the top select ecw and that'll bring you to all of the ecw episodes that i have covered thus far which at this point i think it's just three of them but we will continue because there's a lot of ecw in 1995 much more than wwf and wcw so we're gonna we're going to be hitting ECW hard this next year or two. So looking forward to it because it's always a it's always just a silly time covering these shows, man. There's just so much shit to poke fun at. But there's also also a lot of good stuff, a lot of good stuff coming. We're not even near the peak of ECW. So check that out. Check out all my episodes at apronbump.com or wherever you listen to podcasts, YouTube, etc. Next week, we have... 
Ring of Honor, All-Star Extravaganza. So hopping from uh, Philadelphia Indie Wrestling from 1995 over to Philadelphia Indie Wrestling from 2002. <laughs> Lots of crossover there, uh, but also the debut of CM Punk next week in Ring of Honor. So don't want to miss that. So subscribe so you don't miss it. Subscribe on YouTube as well. The video versions, as always, are up there. Um, yeah, that's all a daddy has for you today. Thank you guys so, so much for listening. I'm hard. Yeah.